Hello and welcome. My name is Miss Amy. I'm one of the librarians at the Gwinnell Library and I'm so excited that you're joining me for another week of Tales from Drumlin Farm, a special virtual field trip and story time to a very special place, Mass Audubon Drumlin Farm Wildlife Sanctuary. Drumlin Farm is located in Lincoln, Massachusetts, and it's a special place that I used to bring my kiddos to when they were little, and so I'm so excited that I get the chance to share it with all of you this week and throughout the summer. This week, we are researching rabbits. And we're doing that because we are sort of exploring different pets this week at the library. And rabbits are pets that some people have, including my family. We have a pet rabbit named Artichoke. And so today we're going to be researching rabbits here at Drumlin Farm because they also have some rabbits. And we are joined once again this week by Miss Beth, teacher naturalist here at Drumlin Farm. Thanks so much for joining us again this week. It is so nice to be here. It's nice to see you. It's great to see you too. So, rabbits. Rabbits. I do love rabbits yes. very much. <laughs> and um, I guess I wanted to start off by asking what kind of rabbits live here in yeah. New England? Well, we have wild rabbits, we have the New England cottontail, and we have the eastern cottontail, and we also have domestic rabbits, which are those pets. Those, those pets. pet rabbits. Yeah. 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 So my pet rabbit artichoke is a domesticated it rabbit. It is a domesticated rabbit. Right. But the rabbits I see when I'm out walking in the morning yeah. are those wild ones. And yeah. what type is the more common rabbit? Yeah. So the eastern cottontail is mostly the rabbit that you see in your yard or see in the park. Those okay. are the rabbits that when you go outside, that's what you see. That's what I see. Yeah. Those rabbits. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, I would love to go see a rabbit if possible. Absolutely. So um, let's count to three and head over and see some rabbits. All right. One, two, three, let's go! And here we are at the rabbit enclosure at Drumlin Farm. So Miss Beth, who lives in this rabbit enclosure? Yeah, so this is Onyx. He is a domestic rabbit. He's a Fleming giant and he is huge. He is huge. Look at him. And so what is sort of the difference between a domesticated and wild? We talked about it a little bit, but yeah. in physical characteristics and sort of in, in care, what's the difference? Well, that's a, that's a fun question because the domestic rabbits tend to be bigger. Okay. And um, so if you were out in your yard and you saw a small rabbit, it most likely is an Eastern cottontail. And really the difference is a wild animal has to get their own food, mm -hmm. water, and shelter. Yep, yep. So for your rabbit that you have at home, you provide the That's food, true. water, and shelter, right? You right. look after it. Yep, yep, we look after it. And if it's a wild rabbit, they have to find their own food, water, and shelter. Right, so they're a little bit smaller. They are smaller. They're smaller. And often a domestic rabbit, a pet rabbit, will be black or white or have many colors, but the rabbit out in your yard, that eastern cottontail, is going to be more browns and will blend in, will use camouflage right. to help it survive. Help it survive. Yeah. Absolutely. So that it can hide. So when might we see a rabbit outside? What mm. time of day? Yeah, that's a fun one because rabbits will eat. They'll come out to eat in the morning and at the night, at the in night. the evening time. Okay. You know what that's called? Yes, that is crepuscular. Nice. So that means they come out at dawn and dusk. That's a big Perfect. word, crepuscular. So yes, okay, so that's when you can see them. And in the wild, where do rabbits live? Well, you'll find them everywhere. Okay. Um, that's why you're seeing them in your yards and in the, the parks, because they figured out that they can find food. So they can find uh, seeds and grasses, they love dandelions, mm -hmm. so you can find that anywhere. Right. But they also, if you see them eating, they're on, of course, on the grass, Right. but they will find a burrow. They will okay. find a safe place underground. Okay, so yeah. they live underground. Underground. So during the day and, and the bit greater part of the night, when it's yeah. not dawn or dusk, they are underground. Yeah, in a okay. burrow. In a burrow. Yeah. Okay. All right, so they live in burrows. About how many rabbits are in a burrow, typically? 
Well, usually it's a family. Okay. You know, the, um, the parents will make a special room in the, in the borough for the babies. Oh, really? And they get yes, their own room? So they get their own room, but mom spends most of her time with them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, right. and mom could have um, five, six, seven, eight babies. That she's caring that she's for caring at one time. For, wow. Yeah. Okay. In, in that burrow. In that burrow. Yeah. So there's a couple rooms and it sounds like a lot of bunnies in the a burrow. A lot of bunnies. A lot of bunnies in that burrow. All right. Well, I wonder if we could go see a different rabbit. I heard you have another rabbit here. We do. All right. So let's go see that other rabbit. What is that other rabbit's name again? Moby. Moby. We're yeah. going to go see Moby. So let's all count to three and head over and meet Moby. Here we go. One, two, three, let's go! And here we are with Moby. Hello, Moby. Can I pet Moby? Sure. Hello. Oh, so soft. So very, very soft. Ooh, a lot of hair too, a lot of fur. Yep, a lot of fur. So, what does Moby eat? Uh, you were talking earlier about what wild rabbits eat. Yeah. What about domesticated rabbits? So. The same as with the wild rabbits, they need food, water, and shelter. So we've provided some hay, some kale. We could have provided carrots. Carrots. Or uh, lettuce. Yep, lettuce, yep. definitely. And we always make sure that we provide water. Some water, yeah, yeah. 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 Our bunny loves cilantro. Mm, <laughs> delicious. Cilantro and basil. It smells very lovely when we feed our bunny. Wonderful. So, I, I have heard, or I have a question about what is the difference between a rabbit and a hare? Because oh. sometimes in stories, you hear about hares and rabbits, and sometimes they seem interchangeable. Right. Are they the same? No, they're no, not. No, they're not. No. Okay. So a hare is bigger. Okay. It tends to be bigger, have really much longer uh, ears. Okay. And bigger back legs and feet. Okay. Yeah, because they use those feet as snowshoes. Oh, big snowshoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not the same, um, especially here where we have the Eastern Cottontail, which is a tiny, it's yes. a tiny it rabbit. A tiny rabbit. Yeah. Yes, especially compared to Moby. Mm -hmm. So what are some special things that help rabbits survive in the wild? Yeah, so they have both physical adaptations which a physical adaptation would be like really big ears so that they can funnel sound so they have really good hearing um, it might be uh, a really good sense of smell mm, yes. right yes or nose. the ability to camouflage the way they look mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those are all physical adaptations having really big hind legs so that they can hop really fast right those are all those physical are... adaptations that make it possible for rabbits to survive right absolutely yeah and boy do they hop they really can <laughs> hop they, they really, really can, can hop. hop it's very fun to watch it's very fun to watch excellent hello can i say hello again yes Ooh. yeah yeah I mean, one of the things about rabbits that people will have, you notice all that fur that came up? They will actually use the fiber to make things. Really? To, yeah, yeah. You can get long haired rabbits that people will brush and you, you can knit with it. You can knit with it. <laughs> knit with their fur. Wow. That's amazing. So, Miss Beth, I've heard yeah. that rabbits have pretty big teeth. Mm. Tell me about rabbit teeth. They do. They do have big teeth. So, they need to chew. They need to keep those teeth um, from, they continue to grow. Oh. And so, the, the hay will help. There are some that will chew on wood or um, they, they will keep those teeth nice and uh, short. On their own. On their own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But their teeth just they, grow all the they time. They just keep growing. So not like our teeth. No. No. Nope. Okay. So their teeth just grow and grow. But so they're always chewing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, I think we should go find a cozy spot to read our story. So let's count to three and head on over. One, two, three. Let's go. 
Wow, what a beautiful rabbit that we just met, Moby. Oh my goodness, he was adorable and so, so soft. Well, I have a fun story for you today. This is called The Wonderful Habits of Rabbits. And it's by Douglas Florian and Sonia Sanchez. The wonderful Habits of Rabbits. We just learned a lot about the habits of rabbits. Let's explore some more. The habits of rabbits are many, not few, with plenty of things that they love to do. Look at all those rabbits, all sorts of different colors. There's waking up early to see the sunrise and yawning at dawn while rubbing your eyes. That's right, remember they come out at dawn and dusk. There's leaping and creeping and digging up holes. There's frightening frogs and discovering moles. That's a mole right over there who also lives underground like the rabbits do in their burrows. In spring, there is smelling the fragrance of flowers. In summer, they're swimming and lazing for hours. There's playing with leaves when the autumn winds blow. In winter, there's building a rabbit of snow. Look at how cute. Now, do we think rabbits really build rabbits of snow? Uh, I don't know about that, but it's fun to imagine. Of course, there is hearing with great rabbit ears. We just talked about those amazing ears. And finding lost things that were buried for years. They are great diggers. They have to dig those burrows. There's hitching a ride on the back of your pup. One thing is for sure, he has the best hop. There's racing your cousin and sister and brother. And when you get home, there's hugging your mother. There's chewing a carrot and biting a beet. And when there is music, there's thumping your feet. But the sun sets. But as the sun sets, then there's going to bed, stretching your arms and scratching your head. One habit of rabbits that's not to be missed is saying good night with a hug and a kiss. Good night, rabbit. Good night. Wow, I loved that story. And we've learned so much today researching rabbits. I hope that you all are reading wonderful stories at home. And for those of you participating in the Good Now Library Summer Reading Program, I hope you're keeping good track of those minutes. And I hope you will join us next week when we will be observing owls. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.